first step is to put on boots. And as you can see, I have a great selection of different boots here. They are for different uh, kinds of situations, different kinds of riding, depends on if I'm pedaling or if I'm walking. Uh, the easiest boot for 10 degree weather in Duluth, Minnesota is these because they're warm and they slip on. Uh, if it was warmer, I would have a, a little different boot. If I was walking or bicycling, I would have a little different boot. But for a motorcycle ride today to go and get an errand done, those are the boots. Now I'm going to get dressed and show you how I do that. A lightweight down puffy will be enough under my riding suit for the roughly eight miles that I need to go today. And you'll notice that I'm putting it all the way up to my neck. You could use a scarf. This is a Aerostitch R3 white. It's the tactical version, which means it does not have the extra ballistic nylon uh, layers. Because it's 10 today, I'm going to wear a baklava under my helmet and uh, over my face. That's basically all there is to that. Here's the key of the bike. Today these are warmer than my motorcycle gloves, so next stop is out in the garage. For about the last 10 years here, I've started riding more in the winter. We usually get about 100 inches of snow a year and have a reliable two to three week long period when the daily high temperature never gets above zero degrees Fahrenheit. At first, I started pedaling in the winter using a junky bicycle. Which I put together a second set of wheels for it and with winter studded tires, which were at the time uncommon but not unknown, I rode almost all winter. With the right clothing, even walking in super cold and super stormy conditions is pretty easy and pretty satisfying. After several winters using the studded tire bicycle, it seemed to be tolerating the abuse better than I'd anticipated. So I decided I wanted to do more and bought an electric bicycle and made a second set of winter wheels for it. That was three years ago and the electric now has about 3,200 miles of short range commuting on its odometer. The biggest uh, difficulty was on the days when there was actually snow and tire ruts on the streets. This shows me coming in from work, uh, camera's on a tripod, this is uh, in the basement of my home. I just came in from the garage, it was probably a 25 degree day and snowy. Put down my backpack, it shows a shelving unit from an unpainted furniture store that holds helmets and gloves. The reason you can't hear me talking, why this is a voiceover, is because the microphone that I was using uh, was underneath two layers of clothes and it was too muffled. So that's why I'm giving you a voiceover. Uh, and now I'm getting out of the suit. And I had a nice five mile ride home. Uh, and in a minute, the microphone will start working again as soon as I get the Don Puffy off. Um, behind the camera is a washer and a dryer. And this is the basement of my residence. So there's the down puffy. This is fascinating, I'm sure, to all of you who um, are watching. That's supposed to be sarcastic. This is a little rack I made to hang the suits. So you can see on either side of this entry to the basement. Now here comes the audio. On surface streets, a pretty easy flat commute, nothing challenging. Uh, and if I go to the grocery store like I did today on my way home, the total mileage is about uh, 10, 15 miles today of riding. That was the best part of my day. And uh, one of the keys to doing this without the bike is to have a riding suit that's 
big enough to allow you to have a down thing or a couple of sweaters underneath. I have a different size suit for summer that doesn't have as much room in it. Um, basically, you um, this is really the key to it. Uh, I'm good probably down to about 20 degrees with just this for my 10 to 15 to 20 mile days around town. My bike, which I'll show you in a little while, has electrically heated grips and some other modifications for winter, but I really don't even use the electric grips if the gloves are good and warm. Uh, the problem that I ran into this year more than anything else is starting the bike in super cold temperatures which for the, the particular bike I'm using is a modified DRZ400. I didn't take the carburetor apart. I didn't put in a larger pilot jet. Uh, I did other modifications, but it really isn't happy and reliably starting below about 20 to 23 degrees. So if it's 18 or 12, I probably won't take it to work. Even though I would be fine, I don't want to come out from work at 14 or 12 degrees and not be able to start the bike. I think if I change the pilot jet, richened it up a little bit, it would be fine. But with this uh, outfit, a slightly bigger suit, if it was colder than it was today, I would probably have a sweater on, then the down jacket, then the suit. Uh, I've got a couple different kinds of gloves. I've also got some uh, mittens that work. A lot of uh, riders who are riding at freeway speeds and longer distances use a product that surrounds your hand grip with a, a sort of a poji or a they used to call them hippo hands back in the days where you'd velcro it onto your grips and then you could use a little bit lighter glove so you'd have better control. Uh, the problem with riding in, in super cold and icy conditions is it's a tough environment. It's not about really keeping warm for these uh, city type distances that I'm doing. I call it the thermos bottle effect. If you dress indoors and you zip up and go out and start your bike and you go to work, you're fine for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so before you even have to worry. So I'm, it's not like I'm going all day. Um, I like a modular helmet because uh, for a lot of different reasons, they're just nice in the city. You can quick walk into a store, pay a gas, whatever, uh, talk to people. Um, I don't use uh, a complicated face shield or anti-fog. I just uh, tip it up a little bit when I come to a stop or all the way uh, when I'm going to be at a stoplight for a while. So I don't breathe on it and it stays uh, fine, basically. What else is here? If it's really cold, I have a couple of these baklavas that you wear over. This is the thinnest of the ones that I have. And just this much insulation is enough to make you comfortable with your helmet on the kind of riding I'm doing. So this would be a day when it's 10 degrees or zero degrees or even a couple degrees below. If I know that the bike uh, isn't going to sit outdoors in that temperature, so I know it'll start, I would put this on, then the helmet on and go. Uh, again, the, the logistics are a little different than when you're uh, trying to ride uh, three or four hours or more um, on a trip. And now I'm in Birkenstocks and uh, let's see, I got my daily back and forth to work backpack, which is full of um, heavy items, liquid items. And uh, the lighter stuff is in one of these lightweight portable bags, which I carry in the top pocket of the backpack. So this was around my left forearm as I rode back from the grocery store. A little more carefully than I'm doing it now, but I would ride along like this till I got here. On the strap of the backpack, I have a garage remote on a little carabiner. I can't think of much else. It's really not complicated. The hardest part is not the dressing and not even the riding the bike on occasionally icy surfaces. Uh, I've got, I'll, when we get to the bike, I'll tell you about the tires and how I set the bike up. The real problem is people look at you like you're nuts. Um, you're, it's maybe I'm extra sensitive to it, but I'm the only person on a motorcycle. I'm having a, a good time. It's not recreation, but it, it's getting me 40 miles or 50 miles to the gallon and it's one less car, and I'm loving the experience and feelings of riding. It's the best part of my day. 
but the people in traffic give you the stink eye a lot. No other way to say it. Some people get it and some people like it, but a lot of people don't understand what you're doing on a motorcycle in their way on a slushy or a wet or a whatever kind of a street. Today, as I said, it was about 33 or 34. It was very easy. I think I'll end this here and be back with you in a minute with um, the bike. This is a DRZ 400 Suzuki. I think this one's a 2006 or 7. And this is the bike I chose to try and make a winter riding bike this year. Uh, I'll run down the changes I made, which were sort of minimal. I sent the forks out to somebody who shortened them about an inch and a half. The rear end I shortened about an inch and a half, so it, it's lower and easier to manage in snow and slippery surfaces. I changed the front wheel from a 18, from a 21 inch front wheel to an 18 inch front wheel. So on both ends of this bike. Uh, there is a 400 by 18 gummy trials tire. There is a genre of tires called gummy tires, and the rubber durometer is extremely soft, um, designed to stick to s mossy rocks and things that trials riders like. The problem with uh, gummy trials tires is this is a 400cc bike uh, that weighs a lot more than a 250cc trials bike and uh, it has a lot more power. So uh, the rear knobs are pulling out, but when the pavement is cold, when it's 25 degrees or 18 degrees, these stick very nice. The rubber is so soft that it, 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 in, in normal motorcycle tires in the, those temperatures are so hard that it doesn't give you as much traction. The ru rubber doesn't interlock with the gr grains in the road. I studded both of these tires with a uh, couple hundred uh, screw-in carbide-tipped studs. Uh, they lasted all winter. They make a nice zinging zzz sound as you drive around on them. Um, and the only flaw in the tires is that the rear knobs are not handling the power as I had hoped. Next winter, I'll try something a little different. My fingers are on these uh, levers. When you're riding in cold temperatures, um, a lot of cold gets through your fingertips into the, into the glove and you get cold fingers, even though this bike has electric grips. The solution that works best for me is the siliconized, stretchy electrical tape. If you wrap uh, around the, where your fingers are touching, a little bit of uh, two layers or three of uh, siliconized electrical tape, silicon stretchy electrical tape, it insulates you well enough from the cold uh, of the lever and you have warmer fingertips then. In addition to the halogen, uh, I mean the uh, LED headlight bulb that I put in here, I also put a small um, LED driving light. Uh, I like the asymmetric appearance to cars. They sort of, I think, see me better uh, and it adds a little bit of light. This, this one draws so little that it's within the capacity of this little rocker switch. Um, so there was no need for a relay or anything. I just had to run uh, leads to it. Um, on the other handlebar, I have a friction adjustable throttle, which is helpful when you warm up the bike. I've modified it with, instead of an Allen screw that holds, that sets your tension, I can now set the tension uh, of the lock with this uh, screw with a piece of fuel line on it. Uh, there's a thermometer here. There's a little mini LED 12-volt uh, uh, voltage gauge that tells me how the voltage is. There's a USB um, thing for my phone, should I want the phone on the bike in the winter. I have never done that. Um, on the saddle, I'm using an Aerostitch sheepskin uh, saddle cover because uh, I did not want to put an electric seat on this bike. There's not a lot of spare power here. And when you use a sheepskin in the winter, uh, you basically are warm. It, it's not a direct contact from the vinyl of the saddle through the clothing that you're wearing to your bottom. You're sort of sitting on something that has a, a quarter of an inch or a little more of very good insulation. Um, I put some painters, painter's blue tape on the front of the radiator where the air shrouds are to block some air in the coldest part of the winter. 
had fresh oil. Um, it's pretty basic stuff. I did not rejet the carburetor, so it doesn't start really good below about 20, 25 degrees. I think a bigger pilot jet would have taken care of that, but I was too lazy to do that. I think that's about everything on the bike. It's worked pretty good, uh, except for cold, cold, cold weather starting. It steers great. The studded tires give me uh, enough feeling of security so that when I hit some ice, uh, it's not like you're just taking your life in your old hands. You can't do any radical riding or radical maneuvers, but you can make it through an icy patch okay. When there is an inch or two or three or more of snow on the pavement, it gets a little bit more difficult, and I choose not to ride it. I, thanks to the plague of COVID, I figured out how to work from home when I want to, and I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. So if it's a really snowy day, I won't use it. But if the roads are plowed and uh, reasonably clear, I will go if it's not too cold to be sure that this thing will start up. But I've had a lot of fun this winter doing this. Um, and if your commute is reasonable, you know, under 30 miles, and you're not dealing with a lot of hostile traffic, you can probably rot, and you're not too worried about the bike rusting out and, and getting a little bit of patina on it, uh, you can probably ride all but about 20 days a winter in northern Minnesota. That's about it. Thank you for watching, and thank you for listening. Thank you.